today, Felina. <laughs> yes, we're doing Netflix movie reviews, and that is Miss Felina Katz over there, and I'm Granny Tino. Uh -huh. And uh, oh, I see you've got your pussy with you again. What would uh -huh. you be without that little little thing? What do you call that thing? Do you just go around saying this is my pussy? No, this is Maybelline. Maybelline. Oh, like the makeup. Have Maybelline. See, I've, I remember to put my hand on my desk today for my five finger ratings. Mm -hmm. So we're everybody. We're doing something very unusual and this very, very special today. <laughs> um, I I have my own movie, The Racist. Now, while this is Netflix movie reviews today is an exception um and some uh miss felina has actually watched the racist you have watched it right felina oh yeah okay and so what felina is going to do is i'm going to sit here and listen to her honest critique because you know what it should have been on netflix and that's why we're doing this review and by the way, it's for sale on DVD. So just let me know if you want a copy. Okay, so Felina, uh, I'm throwing the ball over to you. And instead of playing with the ball, that means let's have your Netflix review for The Racist. Okay. Netflix review for The Racist. The Racist is an indie film and it's a drama. Um, the opening scene shows an aerial shot of Burbank, and um, it indicates where this is drama has taken place. So I really like the way that came in. It was really neat. Mary Kelly, played by Carol Hannon, is calling her son Michael, but he rudely hangs up, not wanting to talk to her. She's very upset and breaks down sobbing. Carlos a young man played by Juan Philippe Restrepo nearly gets run over by Mary while distracted by a phone call as she's backing out of her spot at the store. This enrages him and he confronts Mary through her car window. Their name calling quickly escalates into a full fledged altercation after Carlos jumps in the car brandishing a knife. Oh, what a well, beast. The next scene, we find Carlos chained to a bed with duct tape over his mouth at what appears to be Mary's home. She rips the tape off his mouth to give him food, and then they argue again, and she just uh, drugs him. Mary Her seems right. What? It serves him right. Yeah. <laughs> Mary seems like a sad, angry woman that resents Carlos, but she starts to enjoy taking care of him, like a substitute son. Mary seems to feel disrespected by everyone. She becomes vulnerable with Carlos, and he starts to feel sorry for her. She angrily rejects his sympathy, and they fight again. Security officer, played by Tammy Middleton, comes to the house to check out the alarm that had gone off since Carlos tried to escape. <laughs> Go figure. So, Who would ever want to escape? He tried to sneak out one night. Mary handles the situation really well, and the officer leaves. Carlos and Mary find the opportunity to take care of each other uh, despite the race issue and eventually form a bond. They realize that preconceived notions about race and color don't matter at all. The music and photography worked really well in the scenes and brought a major credibility to the story. I give it a solid for cattail. Oh, I know for you that's really good. Well, it's my movie, and we know I'm giving it a five. <laughs> it was just a few, like, you know, 
things in the scene that the in the photography that could have been like crisper or something. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, I, I really liked it. I enjoyed it, and the message is just so honest and and you know, it, it's timely. We yeah, really, you know, that was actually based on a, a something that happened to me in the real world, and I mm -hmm. I thought, my gosh, what if it had gone a little bit farther? Mm -hmm. So that's why I wrote it because it's like so many people are just divided between age and and your nationality and your race and all this stuff and it's so silly and that's why I made it like they uh, they were just two people that did something stupid the same time and crashed together. But right. um, and and I did mean it to empower aging women very much because so so when you have white hair and you're older when you're a woman of a certain age you really do get to be perceived to be old and invisible sometimes and i like for my movies to change that because i don't live my life that way and i really i really had fun making it and i'm very pleased with all the actors i worked with so thank you for that lovely review i do appreciate it uh, so what the great we're gonna do, movie. Honey? huh it's a great movie and it really it it needs to be seen well, thank you. Uh, well, I do have it on DVD, and if yes. anybody wants to, they can go to uh, theracist.biz and purchase it. And um, I, I should send it to Netflix and force them to, maybe I could blackmail them into playing it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, is uh, there's another movie, and I'm going to give my review first, because why not, you know, you had a turn to talk, and now I'm taking mine. So this one is called I Care A Lot, and it's an American psychological thriller. Now, um, Rosa Mudd Pike, and I hope I'm doing her name justice, plays Marla Grace, and as far as I'm concerned, this woman needs to win an Academy Award for her performance. Because she... Golden Globe. Uh, did she? Yeah. Oh. See how good I am? Everybody, you really want to listen because that's, I didn't see the Golden Globes. And I, she, with her performance scared the shit out of me to tell you the truth. But she completely owned the role. And Peter Dinklage was in it. And in my eyes, he's one of the most talented actors on the planet. Mm -hmm. And the cast, yeah, the casting was perfect. And Diane West playing the victimized mother in the movie was a good call because she's a she's a tremendous actress and she was so good she played that perfectly and uh i saw an online interview about this movie that stated it was a hot mess for many reasons and they didn't buy the elder fraud story and i disagree with that completely um i don't think it was over the top at all i think it, even if it's not to that level it does go on because the trafficking of seniors for their social security checks is just as prevalent as children trafficking, you know, trafficking children. So people, um, people in these places and some of these uh, county places are often held against their will. Their families don't want them. Uh, and the nursing homes, uh, if they're rich, they get the families will, you know, bribe them. They pay them off to leave them there or they start sucking your social security and leave you there. But in either case, old people really are, it's gotten to be where uh, they're a commodity. And uh, that's scary, but this movie really brings that up. Now, uh, this movie sheds a lot of life on how easily it is to turn seniors into zombies, zombies by keeping them drugged. And that's the truth. So this movie kicks up a new level of exploitation that really does exist. And so um, I think all seniors need to see it, opt to get themselves in better health. That's always my message. You want to be in better health. And, uh, you know, be independent of their families even because so as not to end up in a similar situation because it's like, if you don't want to be there, you shouldn't be there. Oh, a, yeah. You know, like, yeah, but that girl was so good at it. I mean, so personally, <laughs> I would never trust my children to take care of me. Yes, you heard it here from Granny Tino. That's the truth. Oh, God <laughs> knows what would happen if I did that. But um, let me just end it this way. Without giving the end away, let's just say 
I love the justice of this movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so it's definitely a movie worth seeing. And I, again, give it a five. I'm sorry, when I really like something like that, I give that a five fingers that you can't even see. I have to put it in front of my face for you to see it. But okay. it's definitely, uh, you know, yeah, it's been the first movie I've seen in a long time that really uh, made me nervous because I'm a woman of a certain age now, but you know, I've got my guard up. Don't anybody mess with me, you're going down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that happening. Yeah. Definitely. To me or to anybody? <laughs> like you know i i really don't i don't know yeah i can see a lot of things like that happening um easily um well, but yeah give us your review about it sure here we go yeah let's let's hear your review Belina. that's what we pay you the big bucks for okay <laughs> <laughs> i care a lot the suspense drama as legal guardian marla grayson played by Rosamund Pike, is in charge of a large group of elderly patients played, uh, placed under her care. Also starring is Peter Dinklage and Diane Weist. Marla takes advantage of elderly patients placed under her care. She crafts a well-oiled machine using her connections to obtain necessary legal documents to gain total control of seemingly elderly and infirm patients. Layers of the story builds and changes quickly as she finds new ways to include the elderly with assets so she can work the system to her advantage. <laughs> Not a very nice person. Not at all. Yeah, she does find a lady called Jennifer Peterson, played by Diane Weiss, to use her as the next elderly victim. But things are not as they seem with Jennifer. <laughs> Marla finds out she has ties to the Russian mafia. When certain people involved with Roman, played by Peter Dinklage, come looking for her. Then things get really interesting, especially the ending, as you said before. <laughs> yeah. Very well made film that keeps you riveted until the end, although it really, it dealt with a rather difficult su subject. Great acting. I give it five cattails. Wow. And that's really something because you very seldom give any tales for Felina. Um, now, oh, there's your little cat. There's your spin. Is that a feather duster or a real tail? That's a tail. <laughs> oh, okay. I moved. Was you presented me with um, a movie that you had seen, and you suggested I watched it, and it was Malcolm and Marie. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, so I I did watch that, and I watched it last night, and I have to say, um, this. At first, I, I, I liked the way it opened at yeah. first because it reminded me of Rear Window. And I love movies that are in black and white. Yeah. And I think that part they did very well. But mm -hmm. then I, it kind of, um, you know, uh, the subject matter was really of this couple fighting. And mm -hmm. it just reminded me of Taming of the Shrew with Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, yeah. Um... And uh, what's his name? her Richard. husband at the time but you know and it just started to annoy me after a while I'm not a fan of movies where people argue it reminded me of a play so while I appreciated the black and white and uh, I liked the rear window type shot where they have the whole house and the cameras following them through the house and then he was walking in the circles but I think he was walking in the circles too much because I started to get dizzy <laughs> so um uh, so how it started off really good for me, um, you know, I just, uh, I, I, it's like living through a toxic relationship with these people. And I just didn't find the end satisfying at all. Um, the end really did nothing for me. So unfortunately, uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm just giving it two. I'm giving it a two 
because mm -hmm. of the way it opened and the fact that it was done very well in black and white. But as mm -hmm. far as the storyline, it just wasn't for me and I didn't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So tell me what you thought of it. Um, I thought it was interesting. Um, I agree with what you said about it um, beginning. The beginning part um, was pretty much more enjoyable in a way, uh, yeah. the way it started off. Because Zendaya, you could tell that she was very, very upset and annoyed at something that he did. And he was acting like he had no clue. Oh, I, okay, well, I drank too much, blah, blah, blah. But it went deeper than that. Yeah. And um, as it the yeah. movie progressed, we got to see layers of um, their story and how it got white why it got a little deeper than that because she was so insecure about a lot of things and that went deeply within herself yeah. um but they were both were kind of trying to blame each other yeah for you know their own shortcomings yeah that's why i refer to it as a it's like uh, you know a toxic because it's like the anatomy of a toxic relationship mm -hmm. and the one thing it does show is there's two people involved in something that isn't working they were both selfish they were both completely in their own worlds mm -hmm. and uh playing games it's that passive aggressive stuff was in one and we used to have arguments that lasted all night and some our longest one lasted for three days where we mm -hmm. literally just went to sleep for a while and got up and picked up where we left off so mm -hmm. uh that's probably why i'm not a fan of it i've mm -hmm. lived I, uh, if someone wants to study toxic relationships, what, what would you rate it? I gave it a two. What, what did you give it? Um, I think I would give it a two and a half. Mm. Yeah, that's very generous of you. That half makes a difference. Well, I'll tell you something. <laughs> hey, a half an inch can make a big difference. Two and a half cat paws. Two and, a half, and I gave it two, two fingers. You know, let's here, here, two fingers. I didn't give it one. <laughs> Sit. We are done with our Netflix movie reviews. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay. And uh, we are on the last Monday of every month. We'll have some more good reviews. And Felina, go take care of your cat and keep out of trouble till I see you next time. I better put my glasses on. Okay, everybody. And have a good day. Bye. Bye.